If you like solving mysteries, then consider the science of heredity. Find out more about jobs that are gene detectives. This is Oliver. He doesn't know it yet, but he's about to get his genes tested. Inside the cells of his body are 46 chromosomes. These thread-like strands are made up of DNA, and a section of DNA is called a gene. Some genes are responsible for the color of our eyes, or how tall we are, or if we have or will get some diseases. The doctor wanted to have Oliver evaluated and maybe have genetic testing. So Oliver and his mom came here. Hi, my name is KT Curry and I'm a genetic counselor. We are medical professionals who are specialized, um, specially trained um, in medical genetics and counseling. A genetic counselor like Curry starts by explaining what a genetic test can actually tell a patient. Genetic testing is important because it can help provide us information that will best take care of you. Sometimes there's genetic testing that can let you know what was your ancestry. Another type of genetic testing is um, do I have an increased risk of cancer when I'm adult? Curry asks questions about the health of everyone in Oliver's family. Sometimes there's very distinct histories that say in your grandparents and your parents, aunts and uncles that can really inform your own health. So we try to go through all of that. Are there any clues that would um, kind of pinpoint what we're looking at today? Um, at that point, I step out of the room and the geneticist comes in and does her physical exam for the patient. Dr. Leah Fleming is a pediatric geneticist. She starts by learning more about Oliver's developmental milestones, things like when did he first sit up, and then she takes a closer look. So I see the way they're running or the way they're playing with toys and using their hands, the way they're responding to sound or turning their voice when someone asks them a turning their head when someone asks them a question. Um, but then some of the other things I check is I look at their hands and I look for the hand creases, I look at their ears and the way they're positioned, are they low or high or kind of mid-set? And all of those can be fine, they don't necessarily have to be a problem, they're just something I look at to help understand whether they could be associated with a genetic condition. At this point, Curry and Dr. Fleming are collecting clues. Some genetic conditions leave signs in how a body develops. And so, for instance, when you look at hand creases, most of us have two little lines going across our palm. Some people just have one. So a lot of people with trisomy 21 or Down syndrome will have just one crease going across their palm. It doesn't cause them any problems. It's just a clue about trisomy 21. At a nearby lab, another detective of sorts is on the case. Haley Schmitz is a medical laboratory scientist. She takes a sample of Oliver's blood and processes it so she can look at how Oliver's genes are organized. Even though we've got that test tube that comes to us, that, that's our patient. And you know we treat it with care and we want to make sure that the results we're giving out to those doctors are good results that they can trust. Genes are found on 23 coiled pairs of strings of DNA known as a double helix. The steps of this ladder-like structure are pairs of molecules called bases. The four bases are lettered A, C, G, and T. Oliver's body will grow and develop according to the instructions of those genes as spelled out by the order of those letters. The results of Oliver's blood test will give the genetics team a report of any spelling errors they may have found in his genes and what they might mean. If there's a mutation or a misspelling in the genes, that could indicate a problem. After Curry and Dr. Fleming study all the information they've collected, Curry talks with Oliver's mom about the results. When we're doing genetic testing, we're not finding out if anything had suddenly changed. It's something that was always there, right from the minute you were born. And we are just now knowing what to look for so that we can say, oh, this child did inherit this from a family member, or this is something brand new in this child that can predict um, what different things we need to follow them for in the future. It takes training to work in genetics. A medical laboratory scientist needs a college degree and certification. A genetics counselor needs a bachelor and master's degree. And a doctor specializing in genetics needs special training after graduating from medical school. But all three think the effort is worth it. It's like being a detective. And it's, um, you try to solve a mystery people want you to solve. 
the experiences that you get in the lab help prepare you for anything that you would do in the medical field. And because it's always changing, we're learning more and more about genetics literally every day. Um, there's just more opportunities for us to be involved in different points with patients. So it's really fun. If you want to learn more, head to the Science Trek website or check our related videos. And if you like Science Trek, be sure to click the subscribe button to catch our newest videos.